Okay, I'm recording. Uh, and we are starting again. We finished. In the previous session, um, we finished, I think, half of the second paragraph. Um, we talked about the narrator. We said the narrator was a kid talking to somebody. We don't know the relationship. But they are obviously related. Probably his brother, younger brother. Cousin, we are not sure about that. Probably his younger brother. And he talked about that moment with detailed, with detailed descriptions of what was going on in 1948 after they moved from Atta to Yatha. Okay, let's follow together. I want you to look at the screen with me. He said, the last thing before having myself settled, the last, the last line of the second paragraph, before having myself settled properly, the car started moving. Notice what is important about this year, Shabab, we are is um, we are exploring his memory. He himself is exploring his memory and uh, the, the, that of his family and the Palestinian people. In other words, collective memory. Collective memory of the Palestinian people, of what happened exactly in 1948 with details. You know, I'm sure some of you are familiar with, uh, with this project, Oral History, Ikh Shafawi where I am involved in this project, where we interview people who witnessed the Nakba, who were at least, at least 10 years old in 1948 when the Nakba took place. When they talk about the Nakba, they can give you details. If you ask them what they had for lunch yesterday, they wouldn't remember. If you tell them about details of what exactly happened in 1948 and before 1948, they would tell you the details. And this is what we are reading here right now. This is what we are reading. It's like a like, like memoir of a Palestinian refugee. It's a memoir of a Palestinian refugee. So then he says at the end, he says, before having, before having myself settled properly, the car started moving. Notice the description now, because that was the last time for him to see Akka. That was the last time he saw Akka. Akka started, started to fade, you know, to fade, to disappear gradually, step by step, gradually. Akka started to fade little by little. It's like you, and this is very important because it's about the question of history and memory. The Palestinian question is about that. The Palestinian question is about history and memory. And this is why nowadays, Ya Sabaya, we are Shabab um, in Israel, not for this, actually, a long time ago, they've started this project of changing. The names of cities, villages, towns, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know, Yibna became Yavne, etc., etc. And Asdud um, and became Ashdud. And because it's about memory, it's about whose land is it, whose memory is it, and whose history is it. And this is why this kind of stories is important because by writing this story, Hassan Kanafani and us Palestinians, we are rewriting history. We are rewriting our story. We don't want them, the settler colonists, the Zionists, the Israelis, to write our history. I want to write my own history. History. This is my voice. And notice here what he's saying. He's remembering. He, and he, he's telling us he can never forget that day. Before that day, it was like a happy life. Then things, things had started changing. So before having myself settled properly, he says the car started moving and the Akka is originally from Yaffa and now he's leaving Akka. Akka started to fade little by little through the ascending zigzag road that led past Nakura. Of course, 
you know the, the map of Palestine, Atta, um, of course, Yafa, Atta, um, uh, Nakura. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, Atta, um, Yafa, Nakura, which means he's moving northward. What comes after that, after Ras and Nakura? Lebanon. Lebanon, which means he was with his family, of course. They were becoming refugees. We will come to that to that point. So they were moving away from, you remember the title? We will come to that. The land of sad oranges. The question we asked about what land is he talking about? Which land is he talking about? What kind of oranges that bit sad? What makes oranges sad? What makes orange orange trees or oranges? What makes them happy? Let's see. Okay, two more paragraphs, and then we will we will uh, we will stop. The sky. Look at the details. The sky was cloudy. So he remembers that there were clouds in the sky. Touch of cold air chilled my body. Of cold air. Most probably it was. Definitely it was before May. It was so either May or before May. So, you know, April or May. So, but he felt cold, filled my body. When something strange happens to you, scares you, frightening, something frightening, you know, you, you don't know what is going to happen afterwards, you know, kills you, kills your body. Yad, the older brother, Yad sat calmly with his legs propped up, propped on top of the box of the lorry. The driving box, the lorry resting against the furniture. It was resting against the furniture. Look, look at the details. I want you to pay attention to the details. Ask yourselves. I want each, every and each one of you to ask yourself. There are moments in your life where, where, when, where you can, which you can rather remember the details of which are stuck in your head. This is what we are talking about. You know, um, I remember, for example, 28th uh, of December 2008, when Israel decided to attack Gaza. I remember exactly what I was doing. I was driving my car. I was doing this and I was doing that. I, was, I remember, ex I can't tell you the details. I remember exactly when the war of 2012 happened. What exactly? Where? It was in Hanyun, it was driving my car, coming back, etc. I remember 2014. Look at these details. I remember the first Intifada. So there are days, or rather dates, the, the, the details of which are stuck in your head. They become part of who you are. Now, what I'm interested in, Yasabaya, is that these details that he's telling us are part of our collective, collective, Conscious, subconsciousness, or collective unconscious, and collective consciousness, and collective consciousness. When you talk about, you know, Palestinian consciousness, or talk about Palestinian memory, Palestinian memory, in Arabic we say, a vacuum of Palestinian, Palestinian memory. Every and each one of you know what he's talking about. So it's as if you are reading it for the first time, but it is familiar, very familiar your grandparents if they are still alive about it. Read it. Read it to them. Or your parents. Or your parents even. We don't belong to the next generation, but we know. We know very well what he's talking about because this is part, part and parcel of who we are. Part and parcel of Palestinian memory and part and parcel of our identity. Collective identity. What does it mean to be a Palestinian? What does it feel like be a Palestinian. What is, what is Palestinian identity? This is what we are talking about. We are talking about the formation of yes, Palestinian identity and what it means to be yes, refugee. Refugee. That is the word that every single Palestinian knows. And by the way, when I say Palestinian refugee, I'm talking about all Palestinians. All. We are talking about 12. 12 to 13 million Palestinians. That is Palestinian identity, being a refugee. Okay, 
But let's go ahead now and see, look at the details. Uh, Yab's back um, was resting against the furniture. Looking at what? Notice. He's not looking. He's staring. Staring. When you stare at something, it means you are looking and contemplating, thinking deeply. Thinking deeply. He was staring at the sky. What was he? What was he thinking about? That's a very good question. You might want to ask yourself this question. 2014, I think most of you were, what, 14, 15, 16. The moment when Israel attacked, what were you thinking about? And I'm sure, I'm sure, if you sit for a while, think about it, you will be able to remember. I'm sure there were moments when Israel was committing massacres. Zaa, some of you are from uh, there, from Han Yunus. Um, Shijaiya, Hanun, uh, those massacres that Israel committed in 2014, what were you doing at that moment when the Israeli soldiers started killing people? And what were you thinking about? Now, this is what we're talking about. I want you to understand this story, relate what he's saying here. So Riyadh, his older brother, notice the narrator was a kid. I don't know how old he was at the time. He doesn't exactly tell us. But Riyadh was a little bit older. So Riyadh, Riyadh was able to understand in a way what was happening. Um, I was sitting in silence, uh -huh, holding my knees by my arms and putting my chin between my legs, which means, I mean, like this, between his legs. He was thinking of a child was thinking about something. He was trying, he was trying to understand. Okay, all along the way, there were fringe groves. Okay, pay attention now. This is important. This is very important. Why important? Orange. What's the title? The land of said oranges. What do we ha have here? Orange, orange groves. Trees. Orange groves, trees, you know? We have hundreds of orange, so now this is the first time, pay attention, this is the first time he alludes to, he mentions oranges, orange trees, orange groves. So let's see now, so where, where is the land of sad oranges? So obviously, I mean, it's very clear, Palestine. Palestine is the land of sad oranges. How many times you heard this? Ardul Portugal al Hazin, Arabic, that's what we're saying. Land of sad oranges. So now, all along the way, and you know, at Yafa, Portugal Yafa, Yafa oranges. All right. All along the way, there were orange groves. So orange groves, right and left. Okay. What was he feeling? What were they feeling? How was it? Sense, he tells us, a sense of fear and anxiety. They were worried. They were anxious, anxious. A sense of fear and anxiety spread over everyone. Not only him and his brother, everyone who was there was afraid of what was going to happen. Anxious. Fear and anxiety spread over everyone. A car moved with difficulty over the wet soil. Why wet soil? Obviously, obviously, it was crying. Remember, he told us it was cloudy. There were clouds. Does that mean the sky was also crying? Well, wet soil. Obviously, it was raining. And obviously, it was crying. Everything was upset. So the car moved with difficulty over the wet uh, over the wet soil. Um, from a distance, okay, we had, so he could see, okay, wet soil, oranges, everybody was anxious and, you know, afraid, etc., etc., and they could hear the sound of gunshots, shooting gunshots, as if bidding us farewell, saying goodbye to us. All right, gunshots. 
as if saying goodbye. You are leaving. Okay. Now, the mood, the mood is becoming sad. You remember the first paragraph? I didn't know what was happening. I was happy, etc., etc. And now, becoming um, sad. But I want you also um, think about, you know, the sense of, um, you know, the word melancholy, melancholic. I want you to look out that word, ya sabaya, ya shabab. A sense of melancholy, maybe? I want you to decide. Sad, yes. Sorrow, yes. They are upset, yes. But is there a sense of melancholy? Okay, I want you to think about it with me. We discuss it later on. Okay. So they're leaving now. They're leaving Yafa. They are leaving Palestine. And they are, uh, not yet. Not yet. They are moving northward towards, towards Lebanon. Most of us who were um, in, you know, Ramla, maybe Lib, Lud, some parts of Yafa, the southern part of this time, we moved, excuse me, we moved southward, we moved to Gaza, right? And uh, uh, Palestinians who lived in the northern part of this time, you know, left, decided to go to Syria, Lebanon, Syria, etc. So Ras al Naqura, that's the border of Palestine border with Lebanon, when Ras al Naqura appeared, the car stopped. Okay. The women came down from among the belonging and went to a farmer, obviously a Palestinian farmer, who was squatting. To squat, sit like this, you know, on your legs, to sit on your legs, you know, Lahin farmers, you know, etc. Muzarayin, they sit like this. So he was squatting, which means like, doesn't want to move or waiting for something. He was squatting in front of a basket of oranges. Second time. The title, we asked this question, and this is the second time oranges um, are being mentioned. First time he said there were orange groves, trees saying goodbye to us. And now we have a farmer sitting in front of a basket of oranges, fruits. The women, they picked up the oranges. And we heard them, ha ha, lamenting, Buddhist, not crying. You usually lament when somebody very close to you dies. When you mourn, when you mourn, you lament. So notice we have those women, her grandmothers, or mothers, our mothers, coming down, leaving the van, the lorry, picking those orange fruits, looking at them and lamenting, mourning, crying. At that moment, he's saying, that moment, I realized, okay, pay attention, the importance of oranges, we need to understand this because this is our story, the importance of oranges. That moment, this child, this kid, realizes that oranges are something precious, precious, very valuable, extremely valuable, very precious, very dear to us, that they are dear to our hearts. So there is a relation. If Extremely important. You need to underline this one, uh, this line. There is a relationship between orange trees and our hearts. We love oranges, and oranges love us. Okay, so the relationship between oranges and the Palestinian people. Why okay. oranges represent the land? Okay. The land of said oranges. The title. That's what we lost. We lost the most precious thing in our life. We lost the oranges, we, lo we lost our land. The women, the women bought the fruits. Which fruits? Oranges. The women bought the, the fruits and went back to the car, of course, lamenting, crying. Your father, the father is a very important character, Yasabaya, we are Shabbat. 
very important character in this story. We'll talk about the relationship between the father and his family. We'll see what happens at the end. You must read this story. Don't ever come to this, you know, to my, uh, to my class without reading the story. So, so that we can have a discussion and you can understand what we are talking about. Because I usually move forward to the end. So you need to know what happens at the end. So your father stretched out his arm, took an orange, stared at it. Notice not look, stared at it silently. Okay, here's the point. And then burst into tears. You know how difficult it is for children to witness their parents, especially in our culture, of course, and every culture. The father crying. Now the, 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 the father, I mean, the narrator is not saying that the father started crying. He said, he burst into tears. Just like a miserable little child. Okay, noise. Noise. Crying and crying and crying. Now, this is a turning point to survive. When the child sees his father here crying, Notice, why is he crying? Because of the oranges. He looked at the orange, he picked up an orange fruit, looked at it, and he burst, and he burst into tears. Okay? Which tells me something about the relationship between these people, his family, those refugees, the Palestinians, us, and the orange tree. So he looked at the orange tree, and he burst into tears. Okay, in Ras al Nakura, our car stopped among many other cars. Oh, so obviously it wasn't only their car, their van. So there were other people leaving. There were other Palestinians leaving. Of course, we know it's the Nakba. I mean, it's about 750,000 Palestinians. They were ethnically cleansed. Okay, ethnic cleansing. Okay, ethnic. Cleansing. Later on, remind me to write these words. Just write and make a note. Ask me about it. Ethnic cleansing. What happened in 1948 by the Zionist gangs? It's a process of ethnic cleansing. Right? Ethnic cleansing. This is why we have many other cars in addition to our car. Men gave up their guns, so they had guns, which means they were fighting. There was resistance at the time. They were resisting the Zionist gangs, they were fighting for the orange trees, they were fighting for their land. But when they left, they reached the, the, the Lebanese borders, and they were asked, and they were asked uh, to give up their guns hand in their guns the police officers which police officers lebanese lebanese police officers so the men gave up their guns to the police officers who were there for that reason which reason collect the guns very simple Cab officers were there whether Jordan or Syria or Lebanon, but in this case, we are talking about Lebanon, they were there. In fact, what he's saying to me, we shouldn't have officers at all there. I mean, if you ask me, we shouldn't have borders at all. We shouldn't have borders at all between Palestine and Lebanon, Palestine and Egypt, and everybody knows what happened yesterday to those fishermen, Sayyidin, from Deir al-Balah, their brother, um, were killed because simply, simply by mistake, they crossed the border, the Egyptian-Palestinian border. And what happened to them? The two brothers that were killed, and the third one was arrested after he got injured because of those false borders. Because of those false borders. But anyway. We, I mean, those fake borders, we'll talk about that later on. But he's telling me here that the men gave up their guns to the police officers who were there for that reason. When our turn came, 
the table, our turn, the family, our family and our van. The table was full of hand and machine guns. I watched a notice full of machine guns, hand grenades and machine guns. Which means the men were, I mean, were fighting before that. And I watched a long line of cars, cars behind our van, enter Lebanon. Aha, uh -huh. where is Palestine now? They left, left Palestine. Now they are entering Lebanon, leaving long. Attention, Sabaya Shabab, leaving long behind them the land of orange and of orange and this is the answer to our first question about the land of sad oranges the land of orange the land of sad oranges which is historic palestine nowadays unfortunately our politicians when they talk about palestine they mean the gaza strip and the west bank only which is 22 percent of palestine that is not historic palestine the the Palestine our narrator is talking about is referring to here is historic Palestine from Naqura, Ras and Naqura in the north, Rafah in the south, and from the Jordan River in the east, the east to the Mediterranean in the west. That's what he's talking about. That is the land of orange, or rather the land of orange, the land of sad oranges. Notice the moment they leave Palestine, the land of oranges behind. This kid understands what is happening. I started wailing. Notice again, not crying, wailing. You know, who wailing as if he had, you know, lost somebody. In fact, yes, lost Palestine. He lost home. You know, we are talking about home here. Home. Your home no longer exists. Your home is no longer your home. This is why the child, the kid, the very little kid, he understands that, he realizes that, and he says, I started, I started wailing. The mother was still looking in silence at the oranges. So the mother was still looking in silence, thinking, staring. Okay, look at the, uh, this image now. Your father's eyes, Look at this. So I want you to understand. This is a very beautiful image, yeah, Shabab, yeah, Sabaya. Very, very beautiful image. Um, okay, Sabaya, we are about to finish this paragraph, and you know, 40 seconds, 40 minutes. Uh, sorry, 10 minutes. In your father's eyes were the reflection of all the orange trees. So look at the uh, inside the eyes, a reflection of all the orange trees he had left behind for the Israelis. all the orange trees that used to belong to us okay we left with and there was a reflection so which means they are stuck in his head his consciousness when you look at the eyes in, into the eyes rather you can see a reflection of the orange trees very beautiful very very touching image and sad all the clean orange trees inside the father's eyes all the clean orange trees he had planted one by one Orange tree by orange tree, tree by a tree, glittered in his face. So as if you, when you look at the father's, at the father's face, it's as if you are looking at, you know, orange trees and orange, uh, orange fruit. He failed to stop the tears. Again, the father is still crying. I mean, ask yourself this question. I mean, when you, the first time you saw your father crying, your feelings, this is what he's telling us. He failed to stop the tears that filled up his eyes when he came to face the head police officer. When he came face to face with the Lebanese police officer, he didn't know what to say and he started crying. A man crying in front of a police officer. When we reach Saida, Sidon, Saida, where is Saida? Lebanon, in the afternoon, we became refugees that's the end of the first section we became refugees now the narrator is a refugee the narrator is a refugee and we start a new life we start a new life 
uh, I mean, a, a new life of this child, of course, and of uh, his family and of the Palestinian people altogether when you become a refugee. What does it mean to become a refugee as a result of process of ethnic cleansing? You are at the receiving end of this process. You are, you are the victim of this process of ethnic cleansing of settler colonialism. Settler colonialism. I need you to pay attention to definitions. Um, I will stop sharing now because we are coming to the end of our session. It's sending me a warning. Um, I will send you some messages on Moodle. And then next time we'll continue. As I said, if you want, we can have two sessions next time. We can start with, um, with questions, one session with questions, just to respond to your questions. And then we can go on reading and analyzing this story. Um, okay, I will uh, stop recording now.